Hi guys and welcome to Escape Wheel Watch Reviews. My name is Steve and today we're going to be reviewing the Watch Dives WD16570. I received this watch for a discounted price but you guys know the deal by now. It's not going to sway my review one way or another. And if by the end of this review you want to pick one of these up, I'll be leaving a link down in the video description that is an affiliate link. I am now a Watch Dives affiliate so I'll get a little bit of a kickback. You guys won't pay any extra and uh, it'll allow me to keep getting some of these cool Watch Dives watches on the channel for you. The retail price for this watch is $159 US dollars. That's before any taxes, coupons, anything like that. That does include FedEx delivery, which is nice to see. Uh, and they are currently in a flash sale, uh, which brings down the price by $20. So that's also nice. I'm not sure how long that flash sale is going to last. So if you miss that sale, you can at least save $10 by using my code here, uh, ESCAPE10. That'll get you $10 off your purchase. The watch comes in four different colorways or setups that you can see here. There's two white dials. The only difference there is the GMT hand and the text at the 6 o'clock position. The watch case is made of 316L stainless steel. It has a sapphire crystal with AR coating, screw down crown, screw down case back. The watch is designed for 200 meters of water resistance. But as you can see on the dial, uh, it's 100 meters tested. So they could only test to 100 meters in the factory. And then the watch has Swiss BGW9 Loom on the dial and the hands. And the watch is powered by none other than the Seiko NH34 GMT automatic movement. So you guys know how much I wanted this watch. This is an homage to my Grail watch. Uh, and it's finally here. So what are my thoughts? And how good is it? Let's dig in. Let's find out. But before we do, do a quick wrist check today. Wearing a watch that I probably can't show you. So uh, this will probably be blurred out. But this is a new watch coming to the channel from Phoebus. All right, so let's get into the dimensions. A bezel diameter at 38.9 millimeters, case thickness of 12.8 millimeters, 20 millimeter lug width, lug tip to lug tip of 48 millimeters, and sized up for my seven and a half inch wrist with about three links removed. It weighs 140 grams. So I think the dimensions are pretty darn good. 39 millimeters by 48 millimeters. That's gonna fit a lot of wrist sizes. Uh, you can see here, very flat case, but uh, it's still, uh, compact enough that I think it's going to work good and the bracelet does uh, drape down straight away so um, yeah pretty nice to see that so I like the way that it wears I'm going to go outside right now and throw it on my wrist for you and here we are on my seven and a half inch wrist and as you can see it wears great I got no issues with it at all case thickness it's fine yeah no I wish it was thinner but uh, I know you can only do so much with the NH35 you got a flat case there which is again typical of this style of watch really nice brushing and polishing I like all the accents of polished bits here and there I think it looks fantastic the crystal doing a good job keeping reflections at bay even under this oak tree which other watches really struggle with so uh, I'm very satisfied with the way this watch wears you can see there the crown doesn't really dig into the wrist or anything like that so overall very satisfied I was able to get a good fit on the clasp as well so uh, yeah really happy with that and popping out in some bright Florida sunshine you can see there just a stark white dial you can see the daytime loom color I've heard it, of being mismatched but to me it looks pretty darn good um, yeah, overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the way this watch looks. All right, let's go throw down some straps, and let's go back to this review. And here we are on a Hemsuit vintage leather strap. This one I will link down in the video description. Fits this one, looks awesome on it. Uh, yeah, I just, I just really like it. I don't know what else to say. Looks good. And here we are on a Straps Co. rubber strap. This is a very Rolex looking strap, so I had no doubts that this would look pretty good. What do you guys think of that one? I just love the legibility on this watch. It's incredible. And here we are on a Riche canvas strap, army green. I have a soft spot for white dials with army green straps. I think they always look really good. And uh, yeah, this is no exception. What do you guys think of that one? And I've always loved this style of watch on a gray nylon strap. And there you can see the Cincy, Cincy Strapco SF2, two layers underneath the watch there. I think it looks fantastic. Uh, it sits really nice on wrist still, no issues. Very comfortable. I think that color combo, you know, I've always liked it, and I think it looks even better here. So, yeah, really happy with this. All right, let's go back inside, and let's get back to this review. All right, so let's talk about the case finishing on this thing. So the case finishing is a mixture of brushed and polished surfaces. You can see here on the tops of the lugs there, they went with a modern brushing. So vertical brushing on the tops of the lugs there, really nice to see. Flipping it to the sides here, you have horizontal brushing, really nice and satinized. It's got, it's got a nice luster to it. Uh, and then you do have drilled lugs, which is nice to see. Um, then that those two surfaces are separated by this little 
polished chamfer here, but nicely done, nicely defined, pretty sharp and crisp. Um, again, no issues with it. I think it looks really good. The bezel itself is a uh, radial brushing, so it goes from the center out. Uh, it looks pretty good. You have these nice crisp numerals here, which are back filled with black glossy paint. I think it all looks good. Um, yeah, I've got no issues with that. They're, they all seem to be aligned nicely as well. That bezel gives off some nice light play. It does have a polished chamfer there, which leads down to a polished side to the bezel. Um, so pretty nicely done. It, it does just catch the light just a little bit. It gives it a little bit of a sparkle to an otherwise mostly brushed case. Flipping it to the crown side here, you do have a signed screw down crown there. Really nice, good grip on it. Nice screw down crown. We'll talk about that in a little bit. You got these crown guards, which are also fully brushed. Again, really nicely done. I've got no issues with the case finishing, even in these tight corners here. Uh, some some OEMs, they kind of struggle in this area here. No issues there. I think the case finishing is done pretty nice. It reminds me a lot of Sugas. If you guys have ever handled a Sugas watch, uh, this kind of reminds me of that case finishing. Flipping it over to the case back here, you can see sterile case back, coin edge style. Again, I'm not, gonna, not a fan of this. I will knock them every time, uh, but they seem to want to stick with this. Uh, I have no issues with it being sterile. Um, and then you've got circular brushing on the bottom of the lugs. This bottom edge of the case, nicely rounded off, not sharp or anything like that, so it doesn't dig into the wrist. Uh, again, it's, it's a very comfortable case. All these, these lug tips here seem to be nicely rounded as well, so it's not really sharp or anything like that when it's sliding on the wrist, not really sharp when you're, you know, when you got the bracelet off of it. Um, so overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the case finishing on this thing. All right, so let's talk about the crystal. First things first, we'll test it for sapphire. Sapphire crystal. It is just a mineral cyclops. So it is a dead flat piece of sapphire crystal, as you can see there. It does have some AR coating on the underside. It does a really good job of keeping this dial nice and clean. Uh, in my opinion, flat sapphires, they don't need AR coating, uh, especially when you have a matte white dial. Um, you don't need it, but they put it on there. It looks really good, keeps the dial nice and clean. Mineral cyclops there. Um, not a huge fan of that. I wish they would have gone sapphire, and I'm not a huge fan of this, uh, this cyclops in general. Um, magnification is pretty weak i would say it might be might be 2x um, and then it's a little bit big for this and then it's offset you can see here the date is set off to the right side there so it is all in there uh, and it does magnify even at an angle there so that's nice to see but um, yeah it's it's a it's a pretty big and substantial cyclops um, i don't think it looks horrible but i think they could have done a little bit better on that one all right so let's talk about the dial on this thing the dial is absolutely perfect uh, they did a really good job on this thing a matte white dial with applied indices at all the hour markers a very traditional style layout circles at all the hour markers except six and nine o'clock with the batons and then the triangle at 12 o'clock those are painted black they're not a uh, pvd black and it's a matte black so it's very contrasty it looks fantastic they they just they did a really good job with that uh, they're nice and big and bold I kind of wish they would have gone a little bit smaller, more, leaning more towards the vintage size indices and stuff, but uh, I really can't fault them. I think it looks really good, and I mean, the contrast that you get from it, uh, it's super easy to read, and I mean, it just looks really, really good. The handset that they used, again, really nicely done, custom handset. This is not a 28 millimeter dial. I believe it's 31 millimeter dial. So uh, it does have a little bit bigger dial than we're typically used to. So um, nice big handset there. Uh, reaches right out to the minute track. Nice big bold Mercedes hour hand. Uh, and then you have your lollipop second hand there sweeping along nicely, reaching right out to the minute track. Everything is done very nicely. The printing on the dial, nice and crisp black paint on a stark white dial. It looks good. I don't mind the Watch Dives logo there automatic and then you got your pop of red there uh, that will change if you get the orange gmt hand just keep an eye on that so um, just something to note i do love that they gave us an option for a red gmt hand with a black tip on it so um, yeah the handset i think looks fantastic it looks really really good um, the loom on this watch is also very very good i'm going to pop up a loom shot here you can see it against a couple other watches in the collection and it holds its own it's strong bgw9 pretty even application you can see that six o'clock marker there it does fade a little bit faster than some of the other ones so they think they missed a layer on that one but otherwise the loom on this watch is really good i've got no issues with it i can read it in the middle of the night uh, pretty happy with the loom on this all right so let's talk about the movement so the movement is the seiko nh34 automatic gmt uh, it's 21,600 beats per hour so six ticks of the second hand every second uh it hacks it hand winds 
bi-directional winding rotor. It does everything you need it to do. It's cheap, it's reliable, it's accurate. Here's how this one has been running for me. Can't complain about that at all. It does seem that uh, Watch Dives is regulating these watches. So that's nice to see. This is a nice, healthy NH35. Um, the movement, it's just like any other Seiko NH35, NH34, um, operated by this three o'clock screw down crown here. Nice and smooth screw in, screw out action, good size on the crown. Nice, satisfying pop out. First position is your hand winding. Second position, you roll the crown backwards. You can see there the date jumping. The date seems to be centered in there nicely. Got no issues with that. Uh, rolling it forward jumps your GMT hand one hour. So you can see that nice crisp action on that. It feels great. Um, pulling it out to the third position here. Hacks the movement every time. No issue with that. Um, pushing the crown in starts up the movement. And then you can start screwing it in. Uh, every every once in a while it misses the threads but for the most part um, it screws in fine and I've had no issues in general with the crown I like that it's mostly guarded here it doesn't stick out hardly at all so that's nice to see uh, just a little attention to detail they don't need to make crowns so big uh, and this one is a really good size in my opinion and again it is signed there so um, yeah I've got no issues with the movement in this thing especially at the price point that's that's a great price for an NH34 all right, so let's talk about the bracelet on this thing. So the bracelet, it's a typical three-link bracelet here. Solid links, solid end links, 20 millimeters, and it tapers down to 16 millimeters at the clasp. Brushing on the top, which is nicely done. Very nice, very consistent. I've got no issues with that. Polishing on the sides. These are just push pins for sizing. Um, no issues sizing these things up. Um, I think I removed two or three links for my 7.5 inch wrist. Working our way down to the clasp here, you have your typical watch dives clasp. Uh, it's just a milled clasp, as you can see. I believe this is a pressed outer shell, but I don't really know. Uh, plenty of micro adjusts, so you can uh, get this thing a really good fit. Uh, two button pushers here, uh, fully milled on the inside. Nice tight tolerances. Everything opens and closes as it should. It's a nice low profile. It's nice and thin on, in this area, too. Um, I don't have any issues with this clasp. It's nothing uh, extraordinary. Um, I do wish that they would have used an on-the-fly class, but I know the price is going to go up. And they do offer, uh, they did send this to me, they do offer an on-the-fly class in this style here. Uh, so if you're interested, you can use this one and swap it on. Um, pretty decent class, but, but it's, again, nothing uh, special, nothing fancy. I've seen these clasps before. Um, pretty decent. Um, I do like this class better, though. Um, but I guess I haven't tried it yet. That, I do have a really good fit on this, so I don't want to mess that up, but um, you can see there, you do have your quite a bit of, a, of a, an adjustment there with this on the fly clasp. So uh, if you do want this, I believe this clasp is like $15, something like that. So uh, they do offer this on their site. I believe they have a link to it right in the listing for this watch. So uh, if you are interested in it, that's what you would get. It's a pretty nice clasp, nice brushing, nice polishing. Um, a little bit sharp on these bottom corners and these top corners, which is typical for a clasp like this, uh, but really not that bad. Um, so yeah, just another option for you. Uh, getting back to this watch here, uh, you can see here solid end links, female pivot end links as well. Um, yeah, I've got no issues with it. I do love the drilled lugs there. Um, yeah, really happy overall with this watch. Uh, I've got no issues with the comfort on it. I think the bracelet could be better, and I think they acknowledge that. Um, but I don't think it's a bad bracelet at all. It does remind me a lot of a Suggest bracelet. If you just replace these split pins with uh, screws, it kind of reminds me of a Suggest bracelet. So this bottom edge here is pretty nice and soft compared to, say, a San Martin. Um, but I guess the brushing is not quite on par. Um, you can see here the brushing on the end links. Not quite as nice, I don't think, as the uh, the case itself. It's, it's very close. Uh, and the end link fitment in here, nice and tight and solid. Um, so, yeah. I think for the most part, the bracelet is really good. And I think at the price point, uh, the bracelet is very acceptable. Obviously they could do better, uh, but I think for the price that they went for, it's a really good bracelet. It's not something that I want to immediately take off the bracelet. So that tells you something. I'm not a huge bracelet guy, but I think it looks better on the bracelet than it does on straps. And I think the bracelet is good enough that you're going to want to wear it and, and you can wear it uh, daily if you want to. So there you go, guys. That is the Watch Dives 16570. I think it's a great watch. You got nice case finishing, a really good crystal, killer loom, a good accurate movement, a very good bracelet as well. Um, nice case finishing. Uh, there's not a whole lot to complain about when you're talking about this watch. Um, 
even, I mean, the price point is $139 with FedEx delivery. That's a pretty good price. That is about half the price you're going to pay for the same style of watch from San Martin. I guess the San Martin is probably going to be a little bit better, but uh, not twice as good, if that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a great watch. I think they did an excellent job with it. If you guys are interested in something like this, go check out that link in the video description for me. Uh, personally, you know, I'm wanting more of that vintage look and feel. Um, so it's a little bit too bold for me, the dial. Um, but that's just me personally. I, I think if you're looking for a watch like this, it's going to be really hard to beat this thing, uh, especially at the current sale prices. So, um, yeah, go down in the video description, nab one of these while you can. Uh, I think that's it for me, guys. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.